Oh my goodness, Robin, thank you so much for being here on Fangirling. I am kind of losing my mind to have you here. I gotta be honest. Thank you. For, I think, women born in like the 80s and 90s, just like we lived and died by like, the craft and Empire Records That's and stuff. That's so nice of you to say. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I wonder for you what it's like working. I mean, you've really kind of run the gamut in terms of what you've done. You've done a lot of like kind of genre stuff. You're doing this thriller right now with Nicolas Cage, Looking Glass, which I mean, working with Nicolas Cage must be incredible. He's such a he's such a singular Icon. human. Yes, he really is. <laughs> he's the primary reason why I wanted to do the movie. I've been a fan for so long. I was actually I was so nervous when I met him, and we were shooting already, and my heart was pounding so hard that the sound guy was like, "We need to move your mic." I was like, "Do not tell him. Do not tell him I'm nervous. I don't want him. I'm trying to play it cool." The story looks really, you know, intense and, and cool, like in that thrillery way, which... Yeah, it sort of like feels like a movie from another decade. It's really original. I think people are going to be surprised by it. It's not sort of your like down the middle regular genre movie. It's sort of got sort of like a quirkier side to it. The director, Tim Hunter, he directed a lot of Twin Peaks episodes, like the original one, and he did a, a really great movie uh, called River's Edge that was like a big movie for me as a teenager. Um, so he has like a different point of view and mm-hmm. it's about this couple um, and they, they lose their young daughter. She, she dies and they move to the desert to try to start over and they buy this motel. Um, and things go terribly wrong, which they generally do when you try to solve a problem with geography. It's yeah. you know, still you. <laughs> you're just in a different place. And my husband sort of, Nick Cage, my husband. <laughs> Um, My husband, Nick Cage, is a great sentence. He <laughs> finds a sort of like peeping hole that the previous owner had, and he sort of starts to lose himself in voyeurism. It was a great experience. It was one of those, like, I think the film looks beautiful, and it's so unusual, um, but there wasn't one jerk around. It was so nice to be in an atmosphere where you felt completely safe. Oh my gosh, that's, that's so awesome. I'm sort of curious what it, it's like for you, sort of being in that space and being in this world where people really love you and are really, really attached to your characters and stuff. I was doing some phone interviews for this film the other day and there was a guy that wanted to ask about the craft and he's like, are you sick of talking about something you did so long ago? And I'm so proud of it. Like, I'm so proud that it's managed to still stay, like, stay relevant and young people still want to watch it and like walk away taking something from it. The thing about the director is he let us you know, ad lib and say whatever we wanted. And he, he was like, look, you guys are like four girls. You know what girls talk about more than I do. And like, it still feels like girls can still relate to it. I think that that's a testament to the film. I, I'm really happy with it. Yeah. And I think it's had this really um, sort of huge revival, not just because of the anniversary. Like I was at... Um, Cinespia when they did the screening, yeah, yeah, yeah. which was so cool. It was cool. like being in a band. It was really crazy. There were like thousands of people screaming. Now I know why rock stars, like, it's really weird. <laughs> like, standing up, it was super overwhelming. I know. And all Rose is the only one that wasn't there, which I, was sad. I would have loved to have seen her. She's I, such a good actress. She is incredible, and I was super hoping that she would be there, because I imagine like, all the four of you back together would just kind of blow people's yeah, minds off. I imagine off. she just doesn't really want to sort of like be out there or even act that much. Like she's doing other things because she's so good. I'm sure people ask her to do it. She is so talented and like she doesn't look like anybody. She doesn't sound like anybody. But I do think it's a hard business. I came up in the 90s where like everybody wanted to be like Juliette Lewis. Like you didn't need to have perfect hair. Nobody had a stylist. It was about representing who you were. And now these young celebrities, they're dressed by somebody else, so they're not expressing themselves. Um, and it's like I, the, the followers and all that stuff and having to read about yourself in an age where you're so vulnerable, you don't even know who you are yet. And the idea that you'd have to read mean, awful things about yourself, like I'm so happy I escaped that. It would be a really hard, hard, hard thing when you're young. Yeah, It's hard now, but like... Yeah, but at least now you're an adult where it's like uh, you you understand the difference and like where sort of people. No, you never do it all. <laughs> like it still hurts. It just like hurts less, and you've got enough in your life. Like you have other things in your life that sort of like fulfill you. Actors inherently like you want to be accepted, and you do have the thing of like wanting to please people. And I want people to like the things I do, and I care. 
Like, I care what critics say about me. I want people to be happy. Yeah, oh gosh, I struggle with that so much. You have been a working actor now for so long. Have you seen like a, a change in terms of... No, I haven't. It's not significantly better now than it was 20 years ago, but I'm hoping you know, everything that's going on is going to help that. And I, it's, it's still a man's world. But no, I, I think that slowly, and, and, and you see, you know, actresses sort of like spreading their wings and making it seem possible. Like, you know, somebody like Julie Delpy, who's like writing, directing, and starring in things, and Greta Gerwig, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's important. Um, and I think that, like, you know, the more women we get, the more younger people want to get into it. And, yeah, times are changing slowly, but it's very slow. I think that's why women, especially in the last year or two, have really sort of reclaimed this idea of witches, especially. You look at that, and you look at how women are sort of reclaiming this idea of, like, I have these inherent powers in me, and you can't take that away yeah, from me. Yeah, and taking the power back. Yeah. yeah, which I think has been really cool. In order for things to get better, like, you know, you need to feel like you're a part of a community. And people need human contact. And I think that that's the problem where, you, you know, they feel like they're a part of something on the web, but they don't actually go out and meet those people and have the contact. It can be depressing. Like, where humans need to interact. Um, yeah. Everybody needs that. Yeah. I did a play in New York, and there were a group of, like, 15 girls They like that all flew from all over the world to see the play. And they like hanging out together. They're called the Tunnies. Oh, um, my God, that's so and cute. They have, like, and they all, like, love hanging out with each other, and they meet each other all over the world. You are sort of, like, a fangirl icon. Like, this was absolutely wonderful. I wish I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours, but I will refrain. <laughs> Next time. Yes, for sure. Okay.